Thank you very much. Um, thank you again, Patrick, for the um, very inspiring this, uh, the talk, and, and as always. And um, my comments um, are, my comments or questions, rather, um, are from the policy and a program implementation and the delivery mechanism perspectives. So um, these are some, these are, I, I have four additional questions that the, which I have been wondering when discussing about the, um, not only nu direct nutrition interventions, but now, in, um, now we are increasingly discussing about the nutrition sensitive actions. The first one, do we know what are the effective food and nutrition agriculture policies to improve nutrition? It doesn't, the, we were talking, when we talk about the nutrition sensitive, it's not just food and agriculture policies. We understand that. But the first, let us even, let us just focus on food and, uh, food and agriculture policies. The, as Brian mentioned, that, that, that there will be an international conference, second international conference on nutrition, the very first one, very first intergovernmental conference on nutrition took place in 1992. And since then, we have been monitoring and reviewing what nutrition policies are. And there's still a lot of questions. But now, talking about food and agriculture policies, and what are the effective food and nutrition, sorry, food and agriculture policies are? And these food and agriculture policies should ensure, of course, more availability, more affordability, and higher nutritional quality of food, which Lindsay has reiterated. And nutrition sensitivity, therefore, should encompass the prevention of FCDs as well. So what policy actions can be taken, not only to have a positive impact, but also to prevent the unwanted effects on health and nutrition. But what kind of policies do we need to do that? The second question I have is governance. What is the effective governance for nutrition sensitive action to improve nutrition? I asked this question about the governance. The governance issue was also highlighted in 2008 Lancet series. There were lots of discussion about the national um, the level of governance as well as international level of governance or architecture, the, the term which was used. So what is the effective governance structure we need in order to implement the nutrition sensitive actions and those actions to be effective? This governance question came that when we were um, this is um, that when we were doing the desk review as part of the um, the landscape analysis, which uh, the project which was funded by the um, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation a few years ago. The one of the um, the, the the factors for um, the staggering progress was inadequate nutrition governance. So what is a nutrition governance? This is how we defined it when we did the, um, the desk review. The nutrition governance is a processes by which policies and programs are developed to improve nutrition. In other words, both the process of decision making and the process by which decisions are implemented <coughs> to achieve nutrition security. Here, we then we calculated, we constructed the nutrition governance scores, taking into consideration of number of key elements which countries have identified as um, the identified as their success when they were able to take actions. So we have compiled these country experiences over the tw uh, 20 years to try to identify key elements. But so these are some of the um, the key elements which were identified by the various countries as part of effective governance structure. So the, everybody talks about the inter intersectoral or multi-sectoral mechanism or the collaboration. They have to ha there has to be uh, policies or strategies on nutrition. And those nutrition action to be part of the developmental policy. 
and there, there should be the budget line, budget allocation for implementation. Whether there is actually the funds there or not is another question, but there has to be a budget um, for implementation. And nutrition budget should also be part of health budget. So that we were looking at the health sector approach, so we, we identified this as also the key element. And also the, 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 there is a regular nutrition monitoring and surveillance system. These are some of the key elements identified by the countries as elements for governance. When we did the, um, the analysis, the, each one of those elements or the, the single elements of nutrition governance we have identified the, by, them, by themselves, individually, there doesn't seem to be any significant relationship with the, um, the progress of achieving MDG 1. At that time, we were trying to compare with the, um, the progress of the countries in achieving MDG 1, except there, there seemed to be some kind of association, although it wasn't really, really significant statistically when we went into much more details, but there seemed to be some association between the the progress of achieving MDG and nutrition policy or the strategies adopted officially by the government mechanism. And also the countries having regular nutrition surveillance. But then when we look at this nutrition governance as a whole, there was a much more, a much stronger relationship between this nutrition governance and um, the progress towards achieving MDG 1. So my question is, what are the elements of governance for nutrition sensitive actions? Are those key elements we have identified, are they sufficient? Or do we need any other mechanism or the elements to be part of governance to be effective for implementing nutrition sensitive actions? What kind of institutional mechanism is needed to establish, to allow health objectives to be embedded in food, agriculture, and trade policies? There are, most of the countries actually do have some kind of coordination mechanism in place. Many players and stakeholders and agencies, donors, and they're all part of that coordination mechanism. Is that sufficient? is that kind of existing mechanism will be able to also effectively implement the nutrition sensitive actions. My third question is human capacity. What kind of capacities are required at different levels? This is something that we are also trying to run um, the review what, um, in terms of delivering direct nutrition interventions. What kind of capacities or competencies are required at the national level or sub-national level, health center level, or at the community levels? There have been some reviews about this competencies, required competencies, um, which was published recently. But they still, there are lots of questions that get, we will not be able to produce instant nutritionists, nutrition experts in many countries we, we serve. But if that's the case then, that in the meantime, while we are trying to strengthen the nutrition training in the countries, what kind of competence, uh, competencies are required? My fourth one relates to surveillance system. Again, we are in the process of strengthening um, the scaling up the, uh, the this nutrition, scaling up the, um, the nutrition surveillance in number of African countries at the moment, but it's a new, in order to um, the identified indicators, in fact, that we will be having the member states consultation in 30th of September and 1st of October to identify the indicators for, uh, to be used as a global monitoring framework for maternal, infant, and young child nutrition. So we are still struggling to identify what are the indicators for effective nutrition surveillance system. Are these indicators that we are discussing 
the, you will be able to um, the, see the, 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 the 21 indicators which are temporarily identified and, and it, that this will be debated by the member states and, and we had a very informal NGO consultations and um, this leading up to the executive board we have, uh, executive board meeting we have in January of uh, next year, there, there will be an online consultation on these indicators. But when the indicators are identified, these are going to be the, the indicators the countries are going to be requested to include in their monitoring system in countries. But what are the indicators to monitor nutrition sensitive actions and evaluate their impacts? Do we know what the indicators should be or should be included? So these are four questions that the um, in additional questions and challenges that, that, that um, I would like to pose to this group. And, and so the, I believe that the, in order to respond to these questions, I think we will also need applied research in um, these areas. The, the, a lot of work has gone into delivering direct nutrition interventions. However, we are still having lots of questions in terms of delivery mechanism and delivery platform, how it should be. And so now, discussing about the nutrition sensitive actions, are we now need to look at completely different set of questions related to governance structure, um, required capacity in the country level, the surveillance system. I mean, do we need all of all the new sets or are we, do we need to add any elements which may be missing at present time? I think these, these are questions and the answers that I would very much looking for um, in implementing uh, the uh, working with the countries. Thank you.